Ok, bonjour everyone, hello. Ok. Um, nice to see you, all of you. Um, nice to see new faces and new names. Um, first, uh, I wanted to talk about the video a little bit because uh, it's a brand new video that just came out and, um, and it was featured because uh, you probably understand Thermomix is not only celebrating its 50 years, but also Thermomix is celebrating 30 years of partnership with De Graine, uh, which is a specialist in the art of tableware. And second of all, stay tuned for the new bundle uh, that will be coming out on the 12th. And if you can't wait, you just reach out to your consultant to see what it is about. Let me mute Sophie. Yeah, there we go. And okay. Um, so let me introduce you to our Valentine's menu. I think you can see behind me a little bit. Can we all see my screen? Because I see Wissam for some reason, our new consultant. Okay. So um, I will start with the sous vide scallops with saffron sauce, followed by our new consultant, as I said, Wissam who will present her soft chocolate cake with a melting heart. And that's the best I could, I could do in terms of uh, translation. Um, then Sophie will present her peach bellini. Tanya will show you her special hot chocolate. And then Deirdre will show you her strawberry love biscuits. So <clears throat> let me remove the backlash behind me one second so you can see my thermomix and what i'm gonna make here so if uh, if you have any question feel free to post it on the chat so right now i see 20 people i'm just gonna um post all the recipe we're making because sometimes people want to want to see what we're making. There we go, Doc. Okay, so I think you see all of it now. So, so what is sous vide? <clears throat> uh, it's also known for the temperature that is as low temperature, long time cooking where the food is placed in a jar or plastic pouch. And in this case, I'm gonna show you um, so this is the sous vide set you found in, uh, in the eShop of your consultant and it costs $58. If you, want to, if you want to buy separately the blade cover, it's uh, $29. And so you put it at the bottom of the blade. So then when you put your sous vide food in, um, in a plastic, uh, the plastic is not gonna uh, scratch the blade and it's not gonna perforate. So, um, so that's there. And then the sous vide um, set has the pump included as well. So there's another option. You can also 
just take a Ziploc bag, put it in water and the food uh, in, a, in a Ziploc bag. And then apparently when you put it in the water, all the air is coming out and then you just have to zip the Ziploc. So, um, I hope you can see my screen better here. I'm gonna, there. So I'm gonna start cooking. So I insert the lid cover here. As you can see. And then I'm gonna put 65 ounces of water. So the water shouldn't um, go further than the maximum, which is 2.2 liters. And you can see on the bowl at the top, the, the max, uh, you're not supposed to, to go above it, otherwise it's gonna be a problem. Um, and then I'm gonna add one ounce of lemon juice and it prevents oxidation. That's why you have to put the lemon juice. So I think it's yeah, all of it. And then I'm gonna heat it up for five minutes and 30 seconds at 120 Fahrenheit, speed, zero, spoon. So meanwhile, I'm gonna show you. So I have eight scallops to be precise today. They say 12, but I only have eight. So I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna put salt on it and pepper. And then I'm gonna fill it in the bag here. So I'm curious to see how many people have tried sous vide uh, without thermomix before. So please feel free to let us know in the chat. And also what kind of sous vide recipe would you be likely to, to try? So I'll be, I'll be interested to give ideas to other, other people. So, so that's the sous vide. And then I'm gonna put one, a little bit of orange. They say four slices, but I'm just gonna be safe and put only one. I don't, I don't want the flavor to be too much. I'm still my own chef, so I'm gonna listen to myself. And then, and then you use the little pump. And you go here, it says air valve. And I'm gonna start pumping. And see the air, it's already coming out. A good exercise. And you can see, There we go. I can do it a little bit further. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna finish doing it. Sophie, I think someone, yeah. Thank you, Sophie, for letting people in still. All right. And see, all the air is out. So I'm gonna do the same for the asparagus. And uh, I already put them inside. It's six ounces. And I start pumping. So the first time it took me a while to understand, you actually can't really put, you know, all the food until the top, because this space here has to be free. Otherwise you cannot use the pump. So here, see, it's a little limit, the asparagus, I had to push it away. Um, and so you have to have all this space available. Otherwise, it's not going to work. All right. Okay. So you have to pay attention to really seal the top because I, I just heard some air coming out. Okay, 
Okay, that's much better. And now, all the air sucked out, see? So, I have one more minute left. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let uh, Wissam make her recipe. And once it's done, okay, I think I'm gonna show you, I prefer showing you. Okay. I'm gonna put asparagus. I hope you see what I'm doing. And the sweet. Okay. Yeah, you are kind of in front what you are doing. I'm in front? Yeah. Okay, like this? Okay. <laughs> Maybe like that. All right, so press next. Da, da, da. And now it's going to do... It's going to do the sous vide mode for 25 minutes. So, there we go. All right, and now, with some, you can go ahead. All right. Hello, everyone. Good morning. My name is Wissam. Thank you for joining our cooking class. So today I'm going to cook um, a soft chocolate cake with a melting heart. So in French, it, we call it moelleux au chocolat au cœur coulant. So, all right, let's get started. So as, I don't know if you know, we can um, actually plan our weekly meal on the Cook I Do app. So that's what I did yesterday. As you can see, let me show you. Let's do it like that. So. All right. So you go to my week. And here you're going to find the recipe. I already put it. So I just click on it. And when I scroll down, you can find here a little box. So it explains to you the level of difficulty. So for this recipe, it says it's easy. The time of preparation, it's 10 minutes. The total time, it's 25 minutes. And it tells you it's for four portions, all right? Here on the left side, you have the list of ingredients. So for this recipe, we are going to need 100 gram of dark chocolate, 70% uh, cocoa in pieces, plus eight squares that we are going to put in center of each ramekin. Uh, we need also 70 gram of butter cut in pieces, three eggs, 50 gram of sugar and 15 gram of wheat flour. And I wanna show you this little um, feature that I really like, it's the nutritional information. So it's really helpful for people who are on diet. So you can eat, you can see what you eat and how much you're eating. <laughs> All right, so let's start. Okay, so here it says that I have to preheat my uh, oven to 200%, what I did already. Next. Here I have to butter four ramekins with 20 grams of butter. I already did this also, I wanted to show you. So for this occasion, I bought this cutie uh, hot silicone mold. All right. Okay, so next. Uh, just to precise something. So this is a guided recipe. I took it from uh, Kukaidu, so I don't need to do anything but just following the instructions, okay? So here it asked me to, to add 100 gram of chocolate. And as you can see, oh, five more, that's okay. Okay, here it asked me to put the lid with a measuring cup. So I'm gonna close the lid. And here it's gonna uh, chop for me the chocolate and grate it for eight seconds. So as I specified earlier, it's already uh, pre-selected. So I just had to turn my button. Okay, next. So I'm gonna show you the results. As you can see, here it is. All right. So next, 
it asked me to scrape sides of bowl like that so, with the spatula. So I did so. Okay. Next. I had to put 50 grams of butter. So I already prepare it. Okay. And uh, oh, oh, sorry. All right, next. So now I have to close the lid and it's gonna melt for me the chocolate with the butter for three minutes. 50. Oops, okay, I wanna just to precise something. So usually we don't have to um, weight your ingredients because uh, there is an integrated balance. So it waits for you. I know that a lot of, of you knows already this recipe. It's a classic one, but I wanted to show you how to do it with the thermomix because it's way easier than the classic one. So it's gonna make you save time. And uh, because of all the options that it has, because it's gonna uh, chop the chocolate for you, uh, grate the chocolate, melt the chocolate and the butter, mix up the texture, uh, whisk, beat, and weight. So yeah, literally, it's a, it's gonna make makes you save time. Also, there is another uh, advantage is you have less dishes. So basically, you have only this bowl to clean. And that's amazing, believe me, because you don't want to end up with having all the many dishes to clean. All right. So I was wondering, which kind of chocolates do you use, usually use to do our re your recipe? So for me, let me show you what I usually buy. I go to Trader Joe's and this is my favorite one. And there is another one, the French one. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's Val, 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 Val. let me see. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's really it's good. Valona. Yes, if you, it's exactly. Thank you, Tanya. Yeah, if you can, <laughs> if you can uh, write it in a chat, that'd be great. Yeah, I'm gonna write it. And this one, this one is really good for all, you know, your uh, chocolate recipes. Okay, so just one minute more and... Thank you, Deirdre. She's a chef pâtissière, so she knows her stuff. And um, which, which kind of chocolate do you use, Deirdre? Um, I, I use Balrona at work. Uh yeah, um, oh, yeah. Uh, pretty much every number one pastry chef will use Valrona or, or Caribou is also very good. It's Belgian chocolate, yeah, it's, uh, but Valrona is, is, it's the best. <laughs> the best, yeah, totally. Uh, what? Is it time for Sophie? I can I can go. I mean, I don't know about Wissam. What, what Are you done, Wissam? No, not yet. Maybe okay. give me just five minutes. I wasn't it Tanya before me? No. Okay, so here I'm gonna need to add my eggs. Let me just put this here. Okay, so it asked me to add my eggs. I have three eggs. What I like the more it's I don't have to clean a lot of things. So this is a blessing. So I add 50 gram of sugar and 15 gram of uh, flour. And of course, for who have, sorry. All right, so here I need to close my lid and it's gonna mix everything for 15 seconds. 
All right. Of course, for who eats gluten-free, you can always substitute the wheat flour with any gluten-free flour, like almond flour. I already did it once and it was perfect. And uh, to serve, yesterday I did this. It's a creme anglaise. It's a vanilla custard, I think we call it in English. So you can serve it with your fondant au chocolat. Okay. Let me show you the results. Next. So yeah, basically you have this. So now I just, I finished. I have just to divide third of my dough into uh, four recipe, uh, four ramekins, sorry. And I have to put two squares of chocolate into, into each center of one, uh, one ramekin and add the rest of the dough. And I'm gonna bake it for eight to 10 minutes. And that's it, it's gonna be ready. Okay, Sophie, if you wanna go, you can go. Just show you the- Thank you. Very nice. Thank you, Vistam. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> so, hi, everybody. Um, I'm just going to put this on mute. So that's otherwise. Vistam, can you mute your screen, please? Oh, yeah, sure. Sorry about this. Okay. So, um, I don't see myself. Do you see me? Hello? Yes, we see you, Sophie. Okay, good. <laughs> I don't see myself. Sorry. Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to the class. Um, so um, I was uh, thinking, since it's Valentine's Day uh, coming up and the Chinese New Year coming up, um, it's going to be a very festive weekend. And I was thinking, who doesn't love a good cocktail uh, for, for the brunch? So we are all used to mimosa. I wanted something a little bit different. And I thought about a peach bellini. Um, so peach bellini, it's very simple. It's just sparkling wine and peaches, a little bit of sugar, depending if you like it uh, sweet or not. Mix everything together and serve it uh, with um, fruit, uh, fruit glasses, champagne fruit glasses. So I'm going to go uh, show you through this recipe. I'm going to retrieve that uh, from the cook I do in my weekly plan, just like Visam showed us how to do. And I'm going to start cooking my recipe. So you can do that with fresh peaches, 250 gram fresh peaches. Since it's winter, we are going to use a can of um, peaches, um, 400 gram in fact. So I prepared here my peaches. And then uh, castor sugar, 30 to 50 gram. I'm just going to drop a little bit of it because I'm not a big fan of uh, cocktails that are too sweet. And we are going to mix that. So 30 seconds, speed nine. There we go. So if you if you want to look for something in a cook I do like for example you want to have uh, recipes about sous vide you type uh, hashtag sous vide and you'll see 600 uh, recipe from um, around the world. So here I have my uh, peach puree as you can see a lot of it went onto the the lid so it's a uh, nice and smooth I mean the the um the strength of the motor of the thermomix is so powerful that you can crush ice you can puree everything that you have and uh you can even you know i was using castor sugar before i made it myself because you can do your own castor sugar with the thermomix as uh, many other uh, basic ingredients um 
basic stoppers that you would buy normally. And um, now with the Thermomix, you can do that all by yourself. Save your money. So here is my puree and I'm going to um, scrape down the side. I did that and I will add my sparkling wine. So you want to have a chilled bottle, making sure that it's going to be a cool drink, tearing my scale and I'm gonna drop here, 100 gram. So I just choose a Prosecco, uh, any brand will do. You can go more fancy and take a real champagne if you want, of course. And Feel free to type your favorite cocktail into the, uh, into the chat. Uh, we have many cocktails on the cook I do, so you can get some inspiration and go fancy uh, with your cocktails uh, making and uh, impress your loved one. Uh, now we are going to blend all this speed for during five seconds. And I prepared my glasses. So the recipe is for six glasses. Um, we are only two adults, so we are going to drink uh, three glasses each, I guess, today. We are going to start the day well. Um, so we will pour, so this is all written, the next step, distribute pitch mixture between the six glasses, so you can't go wrong with your recipe. So I'm gonna just, Fill that like a third of the glass with the puree and topping this with the sparkling wine. And look how beautiful this comes out. There we go. Chin. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Some people said they like pina colada. Kai. Uh, pina colada is a very, there is a very good recipe yes. on the cook I do uh, for the pina colada, the caipirinha. Uh, yeah, the mojito, of course. Yeah, that's yes. yeah, all there. So you can just, uh, I wish you a happy festive weekend anyway. Thank you, Sophie. Now let's go to Tanya. Thank you, Sophie. Looks very good. Enjoy. Cheers. Cheers to you. So hello, everyone. Thank you for joining the class. So today I'm going to present a hot chocolate. I like to call it the lover hot chocolate because it's really good and it's loved by uh, kids and adults. So what I like most about my Thermomix is that not only I have um, guided recipes for inspiration, but I can also use my own recipe and adjust them to the, to the Thermomix. So that's what I'm gonna do today. So I'm not gonna follow our guided recipes. So we're gonna start. I am going to add 100. So I slide, I slide on, the, on the right to put my scale. So can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Although you unmute, you mute yourself now. Tanya, we can't hear you. In oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. So I'm gonna add the, the, the chocolate. So I need 100 grams of chocolate. Okay, I have a problem because it's keep muting, sorry. And then I put my lid on. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Yeah, okay, and I'm gonna, I come back on arm and I'm gonna crush my hot chocolate for six seconds. Speed, no, for 10 seconds, sorry. Oh, sorry, 10 seconds, speed six. Any kind of flower, also with that, um, that function. Red flower, um, flocon d'avoine, how do we say flocon d'avoine? Um, 
Oat oat flour. Oat oat. So all kind of them. Thank you. So I'm showing you. So my chocolate is crushed. Now I'm going to add my butterfly on the blade like that. So there's a basic recipes for, for this for this hot chocolate, but I changed it. I ch I'm changing it a little bit to make it better because I tried it. So I recommend if you want to try it to follow the recipe first, but then do your uh, do your own uh, adjustment. So Tanya, someone is, Cecil is asking which uh, chocolate you use. Oh, that's a good question, Cecil. So the I am using the French brand because I think every French thing is it's a little bit better. So I use the Nestle brand and. Uh, so the, the thing with the chocolate, it's, uh, it's a, the, the better the chocolate is, the best the, the best result you get. So we Sam was showing the chocolate. So if you don't have the Nestle, you can use the Trader Joe's one. So this one is um, is heavier in chocolate. It has 32%. So the chocolate might be uh, might be uh, stronger. So if you like that taste, I recommend to use it. Otherwise, you have that one. And that one is uh, more... It's only 60%, I, I guess. And the Valroma, of course, you can you can also use it. So now I'm gonna add my milk. So I slide, I slide down again, I slide on the right, I put my scale on. And you should usually the recipe requires 600 grams of milk, but I put a little bit more, otherwise, I think the taste is stronger, is too strong. So I put about 900. So again, I, re I recommend that you follow the recipe the first time and then uh, you adjust depending on your taste. So if you make a hot chocolate at home, please let me know which chocolate you use. It's always uh, good to know what people are doing. So I'm gonna add a little bit of cinnamon. So the same for the cinnamon you, you, you do depending on your taste. So the recipe asks for sugar, five grams of sugar, but um, I always skip the sugar because I think that the chocolate is already sweet enough for my taste. And uh, I'm gonna give you a tip. So usually the recipe is done. So we just have to warm it everything. But I add a little bit of this. So it's organic our roots just to make it uh, thicker. So depending on how thick you want it, you adjust the quantity. So I don't like, we don't like when it's too thick, but we don't like when it's too, when it's not thick enough. So I usually put around 20, 20 grams. Yeah, that should do it. And we are gonna cook everything. during 12 minutes. Temperature 90. And speak to you. Voila. So Didi. Thank you, Tanya. Yeah, it's time for Didi to, to make her okay. biscuits, <laughs> love biscuits. Hello, everyone. Uh, so my name is Didi. I'm representing the Biscuit d'Amour aux Fraises. Um, so this recipe I actually found on the French um, Saint Valentin uh, collection. And you can find all the recipes from around the world by uh, removing the filters on Kukaiju. So you can get recipes from Japan and Spain, Portugal. And it's, it's amazing because especially if you speak different languages or you're from a different country, you, you might want to get recipes from your country. So I, I love the French recipes because I'm French. So <laughs> I always go for them. So Biscuit d'Amour aux Fraises is a love biscuit with strawberry jam inside. And you can also make your strawberry jam in the thermal mix. Um, I'm not gonna show it, but I'll, sh I'll tell you the recipe for Cook I Do, and then I'll send you a link also so you can follow it. So we start with 140 grams of flour. So I just use AP flour. And the integrated scale is amazing. And another thing that's great is that it can do grams, it can do ounces. So I'm, I'm more comfortable with grams, but 
the recipes will automatically switch over whenever you need grams or whenever you need ounces. I know Americans love their, uh, <laughs> their, uh, their ounces, so. <laughs> Next, we add 50 grams of cold butter. So it's important that your butter is cold. It's also important that it's in small cubes so that it can make a really nice um, dough. So 50 grams. We're going to insert the lid with the cover. And it's going to blend for five seconds on speed five. All right. So I'm just going to show you what it did. So as you can see, it's blended the flour and the butter together. It's pulverizes together. And next, we're gonna add a small pinch of salt. The recipe doesn't have salt, but I add salt because I like, I always add salt in my desserts because it brings out the sweetness. And don't forget to tear your scale. 50 grams of sugar. There. And you can see how it's really so easy to make it. It's literally taking me like 10 seconds. We're gonna add one egg. Just crack it straight in there. I'm gonna put the lid on again. And it's gonna blend for 10 seconds on speed five. So now that the dough is ready, I'm going to show you. So now you have a beautiful sugar cookie dough. Um, so what you're going to do with your dough after is I've actually made some before so I can show you. This is just a pastry chef tip. <laughs> is you actually roll it in between two pieces of parchment paper so that it's actually easier for you to lift up your, your dough, like so. So now it's nice and chilled and put it in the fridge. And you use your cookie cutters to cut your cookies. So for these cookies, you need two types. You need one that's whole and one that has in the center a little hole for the jam. So I use a smaller cutter to cut out the hearts in the center. And I mean, if you don't have a hard cutter, it's, you, you can use whatever cutter you want. You can even use a knife if you want to make your own shapes. And then you make one that has a little heart inside. And then what you're going to do is you're going to chill these in the freezer for maybe two to three minutes. And your oven will be preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and you'll bake them for about five to seven minutes. And you really have to wash them because they're very, very thin. So if they overbake, they'll go really brown. So just be careful. If you're scared, just add one minute by one minute so that they don't overcook. So my cookies are gonna bake and I think we're gonna go back to, uh, I'm not sure what we're gonna go back to. <laughs> I think, Sophie, no, Stephanie? Who's next? Yes, uh, I think, I think it's we Sam. But because, uh, <clears throat> hold on a second. I'm going to show you. Okay, I'm going to show you something. Yeah, it's coming from the oven. So you can go if you okay. want to. All right. Sure. No, I'll, I'll, um, I'll show you something else in the meantime. The, um, let me see, because I want to go. Do you see Cook I Do right now? Please let me know if you see cookie. Yes. Okay. Yes, we see it. Yes. Um, yeah, if you want to go uh, a little bit uh, further and surprise your loved ones, you, you can actually now go to this amazing collection called The Cadon Dessert from Antonio Bacho, which, uh, who is the best-selling cookbook author and award-winning chef. 
So see, oh, there's already people who's, who did the recipes. There's already five stars on top. It looks like everywhere. Well, all of them have five stars. So yeah, if you feel a little bit ad uh, adventurous, you can and start making some of them. And uh, yeah, so <clears throat> I think it's uh, something uh, you can look into, or you can just go to the old uh, collections. So when we put hashtag Valentine, and I'm going to remove United States. You can see almost 2,000 recipes about Valentine's. So lots of choices here. And, uh, and if you want to get uh, a free shipping, I really encourage you to get a sous vide set or the blade cover, I really encourage you to, um, to host a cooking experience with two guests minimum. And uh, you can get free shipping and you can get um, other bundles like this one, it's an eco-friendly bundle. And a lot of people have been uh, really eager to get those glass jars. So here is the occasion. You can ask your consultant for to book a cookie, uh, booking a 45 minutes online cooking experience. And I want to go back to Wissam or should I show my... Uh, my uh, so the thing, it's really hot, so I cannot take it off from okay. the mold right now. So I just want to show you the quick results. Let me see. So it comes like that. And you can see all already the the coeur coulant you know the heart nice. melting heart but i need to wait a little bit to make it to put it on the uh, on the plates it looks beautiful with some it is and it, it does it smells so nice and it's really tasty i really recommend this uh, this recipe it's really easy to do simple there is no fancy ingredients and uh and it's delicious. I think it's perfect dessert for Valentine's Day. And even when you have guests coming and you don't have time to do um, like a fancy uh, recipe, fancy dessert. So you can always do this in 20 minutes, in less than 20 minutes, actually. And it's perfect. Awesome. Well, I'm going to show you the rest of the recipe here. So I'm putting, I put butter into a pan, so I want to sear my scallops. And I'm going to use my tongs to remove the, yeah, the um, scallops here. And you just sear them for 30 seconds on each side. So yeah, they just came out like this. And just put them one neck to the next. And the asparagus, if you don't like doing it uh, sous vide, you can also make them in a varoma um, for 15 minutes. So, so then you can have it different ways. Oops. I can take it off without. And there, yes. So I'll show you the, the final uh, result oh. in less than a minute, but I think, yeah, it's, it's not roasted yet. And Tanya, are you done with your hot chocolate? I have one more minute and I'll be done. Okay. All right. I guess we need to be uh, a little bit a little bit patient here. Well, I, I have a question for minutes. all um, the people watching us today, and I wanted, I asked already in the chat, um, but uh, maybe not everybody is looking at the chat, so I wanted to know if anybody is cooking with us today and uh, trying one of the recipe. And uh, I see that Nadine is trying the hot, the hot chocolate. 
Um, and uh, I wanted to know if anybody else is trying uh, maybe the Didi's cookie or uh, the scallops um, or my Bellini. So let us know in the chat. You can, uh, or if you have any question, you can also uh, just, you know, take uh, off uh, mute, take yourself off mute and ask uh, the questions um, if you have any and we can answer them. So don't be afraid. I can go, Thank I can you. finish the biscuit if you want. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So after they're baked, they come out of the oven, a little golden on the outside. Nice. So here I have my beautiful jam that I make with thermomix, mix. And I just, this is just a mixed berry jam. Um, but the recipe is just a strawberry jam on cook I do. And I, I, I changed the recipe for mixed berries. I use the frozen ones, but you can also um, substitute it for apricot or um, citrus. Um, there's a lot of good citrus or orange marmalade recipes on cook I do. So what you do is you take your strawberry, your jam, and you put on the whole part, just a little dollop on the middle. just enough so that there's some in the middle and you take your part with the hole and you place it like this and that's it <laughs> your hearts are assembled so i'll do another one just in case you want to see again and you can spread it out thin you can put as much jam as you want jam and then right on top there we go <laughs> Thank you, Didi. Beautiful, Didi. Stephanie, yes. I'm done if you want me to go, unless you want to go before. Yeah, go ahead. You sure? Yeah, you're not yes, ready? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay, so the hot chocolate is ready. I'm going to show you. I'm going to pour some in the... Oh, actually. See, so it's not too liquid, but at the same time, it's not too thick. So you can present it like this, and then I can. I'm gonna pour it in a in a in a glass so you can see better the texture. So that's how it looks, and then you can you can add some uh, yeah for the kids or even some adults like it. So you can add some marshmallow on the top, or you can also add uh, whipping cream. I like it nature. And trust me, for so those one I saw Nadine was trying it. I don't know if someone else is trying it, but even when you go to a Parisian coffee in Paris, you cannot you cannot uh, find a, a hot chocolate that is that good unless they are on a thermomix. So, what can you pair your hot chocolate with? With a homemade brioche with the thermomix. So I'm going to show you one that I made yesterday. Yeah. So you can you can find the recipe on Pukaidu. So you you just cut a slice. I show you. Can you see it? Can you can you see can can you see the the brioche? Okay. Yes, we can. Yes. Yes, okay. it looks beautiful. So you you just slice this, and some people like to pour it in the hot chocolate. Some others just like me. I just like to eat it on the side, and uh, it's really yummy. So I encourage you to try that recipe. You can find it on a, on a Kukaidu on our Kukaidu platform. Voila. Thank you, Tanya. You're welcome. And now my uh, scallops Tanya, are seared. Beautiful. Thank you. See, it's all They're all perfect. And previously, I made uh, the saffron sauce because it takes uh, ten minutes, and um, yeah, I just make it before with. Uh, onions and saffron of course and a heavy whipping cream so i'm gonna pour it on the scallops here and yes this is it and stephanie this uh, the saffron sauce is in the recipe right it is yeah it is in the same recipe yeah the whole um the whole recipe takes an hour so uh, if you, of course, if you have uh, hungry people at home, you can make uh, some rice on the side. And, uh, and I mean, it's very delicate and it's very, um, very tasty. By the way, I'm gonna try one. Mm. So good. Feels like we are at the restaurant with five stars. Mm. 
the scallop is really um, uh, like uh, fondre, but it's melting in my mouth. It's how tender this is. Um, it's great. So um, we are closing our class oh, for the oh, day. Stephanie, no, we, have, we have a, sorry to interrupt. We have a question from Nadine oh. about hot chocolate. And she's asking if we, because I, I was saying that the recipe, the original recipe asks for 600 uh, grams of milk and okay. I put 900. And usually the cooking time is eight minutes. So she's asking if uh, she still she should still keep eight minutes. So the answer is no, because I put more milk. So I adjust the, the timing and I put 12 minutes. You can put less, you can try it with eight minutes, but I think the result won't be the same, especially if you had the, the starch to make it thicker. So I would probably put, uh, yeah, yeah. I usually put uh, 12 to 13 minutes. Okay. Yes, yeah, so if... Um, we, if we, we still have Visam who wants to show us the uh, nice... Set, uh, because it's already like... Uh, go ahead. <laughs> it's not hot anymore, but you know, yummy. it's delicious and it's yummy. Yeah, you, I can... So this is the... I told you I did the um, the vanilla custard. It's uh, like ham nice. And you can always serve, uh, serve it with the custard or scoop of vanilla ice cream or fruit kuli or whatever. So yeah, that's it. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Well, um, uh, I hope we you learn a lot of uh, good tips and tricks and you uh, feel inspired to, uh, to try new recipes for your loved ones. Um, and happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Thank you, my Thermomix uh, TM6 team passion uh, team. Oops. I don't know how to talk anymore. Uh, for participating and, and showing your recipes. So we'll see you in uh, in March for our next class. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Nice, nice weekend. Bye. Happy Thank Valentine's. Happy Valentine's. Woo!